Welcome to, to the next episode of the Post North podcast. Um, today we, we have some visitors from uh, the Swedish television, uh, SVT. Uh, it's you, Sofen Gustav. Could you please introduce yourself a bit and we can... Yeah, Hi. well, uh, pleased to be here and uh, thanks for inviting us. Uh, I can start if you want to. I'm Joseph and I work as a senior developer slash uh, open, source, open source lead at SVT. And uh, this year on, uh, I have been working as an open source lead for a full time. While I, uh, while before that, I was only working a few hours a week with that part. Uh, and otherwise, well, I'm uh, uh, coding in many languages, uh, architectural stuff. Uh, but now, right now, I'm focused on open source, more of workflows and processes, licensing. Well, that kind of part. And I work close with Gustav. Yeah, I, I also work at SVT since five years uh, in the same team as Josef, what you would, might call our, uh, it's called Video Core. We mainly do video encoding and publishing. Uh, I have also taken part in the open source work at SVT for some period. I was uh, open source lead together with Josef and another guy. And otherwise, I mainly do Kotlin programming and stuff like that. Yeah, and I've been into open source as a user for a quite long time. But just uh, since after starting at SVT, I've been trying to be a bit, bit more active with contributing and so on. Cool. And I mean, the, 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 the thing that got us starting, uh, you, you've been visiting the conference before, but the thing that got us starting was that you actually open sourced your, uh, is it a transcoding or rendering pipeline? Uh, the, the entire tooling, as I understand it. Yes, an important part of our transcoding solutions where we, uh, one part of the pipeline, um, and we have been working on that for quite a while, get it open source. Um, yeah, it's built from, I, I looked briefly at the, like the overview. I'm, I'm not a video encoding expert, but it, it looks like you're using quite a lot of open source going into it. And now you sort of packaged a workflow or what, 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 what is it, so to speak? Who, who would your customer be? Uh, I'm thinking I'm, I'm, I'm so new. I, I don't do any graphic stuff at all, <laughs> but uh, I, I'm, I'm curious if, if we start this from, from like where you record something with a video camera. What, where does the VHS cassette go after that? Uh, I, I'm not an expert on the whole uh, the whole kind of flow, uh, it, but I know it depends a lot on what kind of, uh, what the source is. I mean, if it's something, uh, it could be something a reporter does in the field, maybe even with his uh, phone and then might not be too much happening before it gets into our transcoding pipeline. But on the other hand, if it's some TV series, big production, then I guess there would be lots of post-production stuff, editing between the camera and uh, the transcoding that we do. And the um, transcoding that you do is for the, the play services or wh where is it used? Ah, uh, yes, it's for online content, so for streaming. So for producing multiple quality levels and things like that, or? Ah, yes, exactly. W would you say that it could be, I mean, is it only for TV companies like, like big time producers, or is it actually useful for, for setting something up for, for smaller organizations like uh, well, conferences for once? <laughs> or, or how scalable is it downwards and upwards? I think the use case is mostly if you have a lot of video, of course you can use it, but I think our intention is that uh, when you need to scale and have lots of input, but that that is not to say that you can't, can't set it up for other things too. So I, I think it's, that's the best feature of it, that you can scale it, I think. Yeah, I think what's missing uh, at the moment for like smaller scale usage is uh, there is no graphical user interface. So I guess it's more aimed at building some automatic workflow. But apart from that, there is nothing stopping you from using it for smaller use cases, I think. 
the CI CD for your videos, basically. <laughs> you could say that. Yes, yes. One, one, I'm, one I'm curious. So th there must be propri proprietary solutions available as well. So what technical as well as non-technical reasons do you, did you have or do you have for, for, for go, taking this route? Uh, there were a few different uh, reasons. Uh, there are there are many solutions as you mentioned, uh, both as cloud services or proprietary things you can set up. But um, and we also we have been using one or more of those. But um, one of the things that this liberated us uh, from uh, that this thing set us up for was that we can in innovate on our own. We are not dependent on an external. Uh, actor adding features and stuff that we want to try out and we innovate we can do this we can do this in-house by just updating the software used that was one uh, big feature for us uh, one big reason motivation to do this uh, yeah, and I guess this is a field that moves fairly quickly I mean my like, streaming is, is becoming more and more popular and new codecs and, and whatnot so a, I guess it's attractive to be able to yeah. to make your own decisions yes the, this has uh, been I, I, I mean I'm, I'm sure we can also buy all the services from different places and stuff but uh, this has made us we can do it on our own time in-house so to say and just easily decide on what to investigate next and do some research on that and it also have a lot of potential for example when you want to try out new codecs and stuff because when you have a proprietary solution it doesn't it might not it might be built on open source it might be built on almost the same components that we built on Coron but uh, I mean if you want to add a new codec and stuff you can't just do it now we can try it on a hack Friday and try it and see is this something for us and can we work on it or yeah so that was one big motivator to be able to innovate uh, faster in house, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah I, I just want to add that uh, how the project came to be was also as sort of uh, we have this uh, two times a year sort of uh, a sprint where you can choose your own projects to work on, and then Joseph and another guy I think came up with the idea to try to try this out to build something that could replace our current solution. It was also good. Uh, point in the time because I think we had some agreement on X years and that, we, that uh, agreement was coming to an end for that solution. So then we tried it out and it seemed to work out really well. So then it sort of went on from there. Uh, I'm cur curious, the, do you have discussions with, like, you're working for a national like uh, broadcast company, um, do, do you have like a community with other similar companies yes and no i would say we have <laughs> we, we, we don't have we have different pipeline we have different uh, ways of talking to each other and i mean we even have set up uh, with different communication channels but regarding and we work together we have we yeah, even have had hack days and stuff together so we try to do things from that kind of perspective. And then, then we also have uh, external actors you can call like EBU, that's an organization, European Broadcast Organization. That's also a way where uh, communication is uh, happening between the different broadcasters. Um, but of course, we also talk to each other sometimes directly. And uh, for example, we haven't talked about that project yet, but uh, over a decade, a, a decade ago, uh, SVT released a project called Kaspar that is mostly used for as open source under GPL. Uh, and that is mostly used, uh, that is used by many broadcasters all, uh, all over the world. So we have been, in that kind of sense, we have also been working together, you can say. Uh, and of course, uh, by doing Encore, the, this transcoding solution, we know that this is currently a situation where many broadcasters are in. They, are, they need a solution to this problem. Should we go 
should we have something in house? Should we go? We need something. We need something more than just uh, to be able to handle video. We, we, we need something more than just uh, scripting FFmpeg or something. We need something to handle all the. Uh, that is a good solution, also maybe, but uh, uh, it, it might not scale. So we also set out to try to. Well, we uh, think we think that the other broadcasters might be in, might be interested in this solution also if you don't want to buy the whole service as a pre-made package that is but does does it work do you do you know if other does the community part work so do you, do you know if others are using it and, and do you see any, like contributions from from other broadcasters no, uh, no. <laughs> not yet <laughs> we we don't know no but we we have had uh, since we released it we know that people are interested in talking about it but in reality, we don't, we haven't had any, I mean, we haven't been involved in anyone setting it up, frankly. And we haven't had someone like mailing us and saying, oh, we're using it in-house now. So, but we have heard that people are testing it. And we know that uh, people have said that, oh, I want to try to, we have so much to do now, but we're going to check this out later in the autumn and such things. Yeah, I would also like to add that it's been only public for about a month now. Yeah, so it's still early days. And I mean, that, that's an interesting aspect because you, 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 some people see that as something that comes for free, the, the whole community part. But it seems like you had other motivations for going down this path. And that's just a positive side effect if it happens. But you, you still sort of have benefits even without. Speaking. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. We see also we have been joking about internally, uh, internally about that. You see, the project got a lot of stars quickly, but uh, we were saying, oh, I wonder how many that people that likes it and people and how many that actually just click on the star and say, oh, it's a good thing that you release open source. We we might never know, but uh, hey, oh, that's also good. It's an ego boast. There's nothing else. <laughs> yeah. It feels better on the Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have, so funny. have you changed the way you develop since you published it on, on GitHub? Uh, I mean, being all open about things? That's a good question. Uh, we had a lot uh, of discussions about that in the team, uh, but uh, we are more or less doing the same as we did before and pushing it up, pushing it up to GitHub. Uh, so that's where we are for now. Maybe uh, that could change depending on how the project develops. Cool. Cool. How, how does it work then from, from like a development and a licensing perspective? Do, do you have uh, contributions license agreements or such? Or, or what's, what's like the license for, for the platform? <laughs> We decided to uh, to skip the CLA contributors license agreement because we thought that would raise the bar a bit for co contributing to the project. But instead, we uh, went for the DSO, uh, the Developer Certificate Oregon, and uh, you, uh, and we also request sign offs for the pull requests. You and uh, from what I've been hearing and seeing, I think this uh, this is a kind this is kind of a quite uh, normal trade-off that you do today, if you think the project would suffer from getting, people think it's too hard to, or too much work to just uh, sign and CLA and Well, I, I can understand them, but in DSO and, and a Git sign-off, that's much more uh, easier and relevant. Or, or so we thought. Um, so we'll see about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it, it's an interesting area to develop software and i i guess because it's um uh, but, but my only experience from uh, from handling like media streams and so on with open source in a professional capacity is about building devices and there you have the codec licenses and stuff that are sort of patent driven is, is this something that you bumped into or i i guess as a broadcaster you already have access to all the licenses and it's already paid so you don't have to care or how does it work we 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 try to use uh, uh, open source codex and I mean if, if the need arises I mean that that would be I don't know any you know any closed source 
or anything close that we use today, Gustav. I don't think so. But of course, it affects us because, for example, you're working on an, another application that we haven't released as open source yet. But for that, we had to really, I mean, those libraries are DPL that this product used that eventually will be open source too. And for that kind of case, we have to opt for the whole product to go DPL also. So, I mean, of course, the licensing affects our choices in some cases. Yeah. That's true. What could I say? For, yeah, I mean, for codec licensing for Encore, it is the case that, I mean, Encore in itself doesn't contain FFmpeg, it just calls it, so uh, it doesn't really have the license, uh, the codex in it. So uh, that hasn't really been an issue. Then in the broader picture, of course, license fees and patent is uh, something that comes up or has come up for Hevik at least in the past at SVT. And I guess maybe it's then a meta question. So yes, you have access to, let's say, MPEG-4. And, and then how you actually encode your MPEG-4 doesn't really matter, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, you, you, yeah, you kind of yak it in as a user. So we don't yak it in for you. Yeah, if that's what you yeah. I'm, I'm interested, Johan and I come, are currently we're working in a vehicle environment where it's not super easy to um, uh, gear the organization towards an open source environment. Um, so I'm curious about how, what did your like product owners or Project leads, your bosses, executives in general. What were their feelings about going open source? Oh yeah, would you? Yeah, we we came to meet each other. Yeah, I, I think they were kind, uh, very positive. Um, wow. Especially, uh, no, not from the beginning, of course. I think <laughs> were, <laughs> I, I will tell you a, a little bit of backstory, just a short backstory. We released Caspar about a decade ago, and that was a big success, but also led to some discussions about should we be doing open source and stuff, and or not, and so on. And while that project lived on and had the great days <laughs> on the side, up until uh, maybe three years ago or something, there was still some, what do you say, fair uncertainty doubt about releasing open source stuff, even small libraries. And that's where the whole, that, that is why we're, we're sitting here today. One developer took it up, up to the technical, to the board and asked, hey, can I release my little library as open source? I think it would be great for us and for others. And that's where kind of the whole discussion started. And what happened was that the board took the decision to, okay, let's try to, let's try to open source things under, uh, under structured forms. So that's why also things have been taken quite, we work slow, <laughs> slowly with this, and we like to check things out and build up the strategy. You know, uh, well, what to do, what to don't, uh, what to not do. And... But anyway, that decision led to us releasing more and more open source. So when we wrote Encore, um, we from the beginning we talked about this is something we should do and blah blah blah. But we should also aim for doing the open source. We wanted to try this as a uh, this happened during the same time as, as we took these decisions to work more with open source. So this was kind of the part of the plan because we wanted to try this to see how we can collaborate and foster, uh, foster collaboration, so to say. So it sounds as if you had a secret plan to sneak it in and then go massive. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we didn't expect the attention. It, it got a lot of attention this release, and we were like, "Oh, wow, that was." So we we <laughs> we thought it would be two likes and uh, something. That, oh, good, they are releasing open source, but we got a lot more attention. Yeah, I want... think there were lots of people putting in effort to spread the words around when Anko got released. So that was great. Yeah. Uh, but how? I... Oh, sorry. Yeah, but, but I just wanted to add that there, 
that this positive uh, happening with us releasing Encore, I think that was a very good thing for the organization because they saw that, oh, people think it's good that we are doing this kind of public stuff. We are releasing open source publicly and people seems to, in the field, think thinks it's a good thing. Great. So I think it was a very good thing for, for the future. It ties into public code, public money, I guess. Yes. Yeah, but also recruitment and so on, I would imagine, because now people see what you do. It's not like writing small scripts around already existing solutions. You actually build really cool stuff in-house. So yes. I, I, yeah. And uh, I, I didn't answer. Stop, please stop me, Gustav, if I talk too much. I just wanted to ask <laughs> the question. But, uh, but I think uh, you asked us if our coding had uh, our coding processes has changed i think one one thing that we have been doing throughout this as we knew we would like to open source this, this thing it made us we created much more libraries and stuff around it and i think we have written much better code than if we just had wrote it for with the intention for only writing it for inside use so if you check out if you check out our GitHub, you will see quite a few things that actually tie into the Encore stuff, but that you can use for other things like the media analyzer. We have a brew, little brew FFmpeg, uh, what do I say, repository and stuff like that. Cool, cool. Uh, how, uh, how much do you contribute to other projects? Uh, let's continue with the FFmpeg as an example. Do you want to answer your stuff? Sorry, what uh, was the question? How do much? you make? Uh, do you contribute to other projects as well? Mm, you mean us personally or SVT as an organization? Or? Either of. Uh, so uh, that, that's exactly the question <laughs> I figured. <So laughs> If you have a need to contribute to, say, FFmpeg, do you do that as privates or as SVT employed? Uh, as far as I understand the open source policy, it's uh, sort of allowed to do it uh, employed uh, or on work time, you might say. Uh, isn't that correct, Joseph? Yes, it is. I mean, talk to if you think it's eating too much time, talk to a product, uh, product owner. Well, and I mean, you, it's always about trust and agreement. Can I work on this? On I, I need to fix this in the library. We use it. I need to fix this bug. Can I sit on it with this? next week. Okay, if the team and the product owner thinks it's good, well, yeah, that's that's allowed. I, I, all I'm thinking now is finally, 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 someone is getting it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it me, that's, so how are you set up for this? Because that's kind of interesting. It, it sounds for, for you, Joseph, as if your role has expanded into some sort of boss office, but I, I guess you also have like management slash strategy thinking and legal and and lots of other people involved in this are you a group or is it just you or who's how, how does it work well <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what can you tell us what are the secrets <laughs> yeah well well actually when we when i talked to, that the board gave us the the mandate to work with this we have something called lead inside uh, inside the organization and they are allowed to work for a few hours with different topics it, can, it could be accessibility it, it can be other things that we find that that are broad and general but doesn't maybe fit into a team and so that happened was that open source got one of these positions lead role work with open source take strategies do your internal lobbying and check out things and uh, ask contact legal and whatever and anyway that was uh, this is set up that we meet a few people that are more into these things uh, we have a lead group or what do you say that meet each other every other week just for one hour and then we bring up topics and this was the way that we used to work together we met up and then we would have a trailer board or something where we had action points to fix uh, things to do and such but now that when I'm working full time with this only and can concentrate, it's more of like um, it's more of like uh, it's more even more a council advice because people that are in this lead, 
that meet up on these meetings. They are working in other projects, 100% maybe and so on. So that means that I may be the one that uh, um, act on the action points more now, and they give me <laughs> action points or are, are more of advice. Uh, well, that, that can be the role for just now. So, so it's a, that's how it's set up. And we have been talking, we also uh, try to, to speak more with architects, uh, legal and stuff when I'm working, trying to bring this together. But uh, there is still, I mean, this role that I have, that is only for this year out. And then we'll see what, I mean, we evaluate all the time. We had a kind of evaluation for the first round of this software. So we'll, we'll see what happens after this. Of course, it would be nice if it, yeah. Do you want to add something, Gustav? Yes, I will add that uh, it. I think it really got a good push to the open source work when there was someone working on it 100% since beginning of this year, right, Joseph? Yes. Ah, yes. So that was great. I hope it stays that way. So the uh, I, I've read the news or some mail. So I think you call it Open Source Program Office. And so I, I get, get the impression that you started this like from bottom up, so to speak. Like there was a small need to increase your work rather than starting with an, an open source organization and, and then try to push things. Yes. Okay. I could add to that also, <laughs> yeah, we, we are, we, when we started this up, we actually, I, I tweeted or something about it the other day, we saw that we had basically an organization had four different needs for open sourcing. Uh, what was it? It was like, uh, how do you contribute? How do you uh, release things? How do you procure? How do you, uh, how do you use open source? And within this little, this little, uh, what do you say, this started up from how do you contribute and release, not the other things, how do you, I mean, that is where we started. We are developers, so that's for us most natural. How can we contribute to a library? How do we release something? And then, of course, this has grown to take, no, we are not, not procuring, but of course, how do you use, how do you comply? That has been a natural thing to go into. And what we have seen so far, I think, if a traditional, if you know, now even can say traditional OSPO role, that is very much to do with compliance and stuff. So this is, uh, I guess, uh, from what I know. So, but, but we're heading more into that area too, of course, as as we work work more and more with open source. Are you involved in any such organizations or efforts like uh, Chaos and Open Chain and these to do group and then what, all the the various sort of organizations around setting up open source offices or things like that? We well, uh, Gustav, we have been. We would like to have more time to be more involved in these things. We talk about. I mean, we have been using tools like Scan Code or uh, Reuse. Uh, and we check it out, but we are not as involved, and that is more of a time lim limiting, I guess. What do you say, Gustav? Yeah, I mean, we talked about it, if we should be more active in these kind of forums, but um, I mean, back then the time was sort of the limiting factor, like you also said. But if, if you could find the time, I personally think it would be a good thing. Yes, it's I usually agree. a good sign <laughs> if you don't have time to do the <laughs> open source office. Perhaps you're focusing on doing it right than uh, being theoretical. But uh, I I'm super curious. So I would like to like rewind a bit. We we spoke about contributing to other projects. So I'm curious. Did you see any? How do I phrase this? Reactions, negative or positive? from your colleagues when contributing upstream to like FFmpeg or what, whatever? I don't think this had been uh, an issue with negative reaction being upstream's contribu contributions. Uh, 
But I'm also not sure how much... Uh, I know there has been some uh, upstream contributions to some projects, but FFmpeg, as of yet, we I don't think we made any contributions yet. No, we have done contributions contributions around it though. We have released a few libraries and the, the proxy filters that are used. So, I mean, we have we have contributed to the ecosystem, but not to FFmpeg itself, from what I know. <clears throat> And FFmpeg might be a, I mean, it's a fairly mature product and a fairly complex product. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. it, it's hard to fix. Yeah. I actually use, when I'm onboarding colleagues, uh, I use FFmpeg to, uh, as an example. And I always excuse myself when I, when I do that for saying, like, I don't want to imply that there's bugs in FFmpeg, blah, 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 because it, uh, it's, it's an amazing piece of program. Yeah, yeah, it's wonderful. It's great. <laughs> yeah, it it also has an interesting uh, licensing solution where you can put on flags depending on what third party libraries you use, because the third party libraries or all codex and stuff they are written they are released under different libraries. So you might end up with a non. What, what is this? I think it's LGPL FFmpeg if I'm remember. The top level is yes. Yeah, yeah, and then you can end up with different interesting uh, derivatives, I guess, depending yeah. on libraries you use. You have similar nightmares, uh, situations with like G-Streamer. Oh. Yeah, so, yeah, I, 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 think, I, I know, they call the plugin something like bad, uh, ugly, I can't remember that. <laughs> oh, I think it's good, bad, ugly, good, I guess. Good, bad and ugly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so but Casper, I, I remember Casper, I, I don't know, where? So I, I need to ask a personal question. Did you ever go to FS Cons to talk about Casper? No, it's Foss North. Yeah, but <laughs> the, the, the conference like 10 years ago. Come on, you one. You're, you're not that old. Hey. <laughs> uh, I, I went to uh, FS Cons the, after maybe I think 2009 or something, 2008 uh -huh. or something around then that. I left. But, but, uh, but yeah. And that was, uh, I wasn't working at SVT then, but, but okay. they, they weren't there and talked about it. Okay. Like, uh, do you know I anything? Was... I, I haven't heard about it. Uh, I also haven't heard anything, but then again, I'm not sure who would have been there back then. Yeah, it was a great conference. Uh, uh, I, mean, I was involved uh, for, until 2000. Oh God, I'm old. I can't remember. Many. 2011, yeah. perhaps. I don't know. Oh God. Yeah. I, I went there a couple of times, so yeah. I mean, we try to view ourselves as the let's call it the technical continuation somehow yeah. because they um, they shifted down or they moved shift. into more a, a tighter discussion workshop forum kind of format, uh, and that's when we started. And then we decided to be in the spring because they were in the fall, and we actually had a good exchange during that yeah. very first year when we had an overlap. Yeah. How many years have, have you had the uh, Foss North now? Quite I mean, this is fourth, the right? sixth year. Yeah. Uh, so we started in 2016. Great. So it's. Uh, well, we're still waiting for our fifth physical event, which will then be next <laughs> spring. Which is <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. yeah. There's a Delta virus coming in. Uh, yeah. but let's leave that. It, it's it's depressing. Yeah. But, um, no, but it, it's uh, it's fun because we gather a lot of uh, all other conferences are focused around a tool or a technology, but here we try to gather around something more generic. So, so you bump into the people and the things that you generally don't see or know, which is kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's great. You had the community days also. I don't know if you had that every year, but uh, I've seen you started. We we had it in 2019, which was a great success. Mm. Success actually. Uh, we almost got kicked out of the social event because we <laughs> completely underestimated how many we were. So apparently there was one poor girl in the, in the kitchen on Sunday evening, having to do like 80 burgers or something. Oh. She was not <laughs> super happy. <laughs> yeah. um, but then last year we had to cancel, but now we revived it for this year. There, there was quite a bit of attention. Um, 
we we were, did not set up a deadline for when to uh, when to add events. So it was a the turnout was a bit uneven depending on when it was uh, announced. Yeah. But but the big ones uh, were, were quite successful actually. And we have some great news that we can't talk about publicly yet because we need to make uh, some kind of PR statement. <laughs> and as you can see, we're not the natural born PR strategist. So we need to think about how to do so. I think next conference is going to be even greater. Uh, I have a note here. So um, I, I would like to go back. You, you talked about yeah. releasing. So I'm curious, do you use released versions uh, internally or do you go for the uh, we're not saying master branch anymore but main main branch <laughs> everyone was, uh, I, th I think we we don't have we we're going for the main um, branch that's what we're doing and for libraries we are doing uh, versions but this is also I mean it's up we don't have a obviously they would use sender on things, semantic versioning, but uh, but they have been more of. I don't think the strategy is something that we push. I mean, it's up to the team. It's up to the to the one doing the library or the release to decide upon. We don't say you should, you must do like this. That, that is up to. I mean, we're still even discussing Gustav with uh, how we should version Encore. Where I mean, it's still a zero version on that one, so we have. On free hands, but we are still discussing where we should end up in the end. What 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 should we consider a re release? Should we do a Firefox and re release like often bump the version, or should we aim to have a big change log and just do a, a major release now and then? Well, uh, well, we all remember kernel two point six. I don't know how many years they kept on going there until they <laughs> decided they were done. <laughs> <laughs> Still have it on some devices, I guess. Yeah. Um. My colleague at work, not you one, the, he always says some uh, old fashioned when it comes to release management, the change log and stuff. But that's my GNU background. Anyhow, so do you have a distribution internally at SVT? Uh, uh, Alina, it's the Yeah. Yeah, yeah yes, you are. we do actually. <laughs> it's fantastic. Yeah. I hope what is it called? the default desktop then. Sorry, what? I hope you're running Plasma as the default desktop then. And Vim as the editor, and you ban all the tabs. The key doesn't work. <laughs> you uh, used to get all of those Amiga Atari <laughs> jokes out of the way. <laughs> so, what is it based on? It's based on Ubuntu. Mm -hmm. Do you have your own repositories to that, or? I'm not that involved in this part, so I'm not sure, actually. But, but again, oh, you, um, if we go back, the, uh, sorry, the, the whole idea of SVT and similar like organizations having or supporting their own distributions, this was not the case 10 years ago. So things are progressing the right way. Yes. yes. I, I, I think the the person that is most involved in writing this, uh, working with this internal distribution, I think actually he also have some kind of informal contacts with other people doing this kind of things on how to how to work things out. Uh, and of course, uh, we will see where it ends up. Yeah, as far as I understand, it's sort of half official or not official or something uh, or I mean it always starts like that so everyone's mm -hmm. running Linux and then it turns out you have you have two Arch users and two Debian users and someone using <laughs> Ubuntu and so on uh, and it slowly migrates in this direction out of convenience and then it becomes official hopefully yes yeah I think yeah, m most of, of of us Linux users uh, actually, I'm not running it at the moment on this machine, but I probably will. But you are running it, Gustav. Yes. Yeah. And so some of the some of the things uh, they do in the, that project they, that ends up, I, I think they have released some snaps and stuff outside of of the of, of SVT also. That. Yeah. So some yeah. of that will 
work ends up outside. I mean, it sounds like you're in a really interesting position from like having had Casper for, for 10 years into to now. But you, you hinted that Gustav is working on something that will be open sourced. Um, and yeah, there, there seems to be a lot of things going on, which sounds, sounds really fun. That is really fun, but we, we work slowly. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I think it was three years ago that we were at Foss North and talked about things. And here we all are. Maybe in three years again, we will say it. Now Gustav is finally released. No. <laughs> you never know. If we do encore next spring, there's no way you're getting out of that one. <laughs> uh, as yeah. an encore. Oh, sorry. Yeah. We, yeah. Of course. We need to. Yeah. So, yeah, that project is not. I mean, we have a lot of things we would like to do with it. We'll see where it ends up. You know. But from a. Are you looking for developers? Things like that? Or is it. More than yeah. that, you, you have your teams and then the tasks will take you. Are you planning to leave us, you are? No, no, no. I'm, I'm trying to promote our guests. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. We're, we're always looking for developers, almost. Uh, just check out, I mean, uh, check out the jobs board at the SVT and you'll find, I think, I think there's very often there is some kind of positions free there within the development. So please check that out. That, that is a good thing. And yeah, I mean, it's always that, fun to know where to look for jobs if you want to do open source work yes. in, in Sweden. Yes. And then, of course, it will depend on, I mean, a few teams, they are, some teams are not working with open source at all, and some are working with more, and some are, I mean, it depends on teams and stuff. But hey, apply for the, <laughs> apply for the job and ask about it. Yeah. Um, I, I, we're, running out of time i'd say but i am super curious about yet another thing so, um, you mentioned legal before um how easy has it has it been to talk like uh, this new concept of of publishing stuff and uh, contributing back uh, is this something the lawyers understand at svt uh, that is a good question uh, i think that we when we started when we got the decision to do this we talked the first thing we did was to ask legal can we do what what should we think about how should we do we have any if, if we release something should we use some specific licenses and stuff or if we contribute can we contribute to something that has in CLA I mean as an employee of our SVT can you input and, and we got a fairly uh, uh, it was not much of I mean, that was not much of a discussion then. I think they were also used to, I mean, they had been working with the Caspar thing before that. So, so, so I, I, I can't see that it has been open source is still, I mean, that's the kind of natural also for, I mean, we're building the whole, everyone is building things on open source. I mean, it's just, uh, it's not controversial using open source. On the contrary, I mean, everyone is using open source to build their whole structures on. So, I mean, it's quite natural to use these licenses and stuff like that. Uh, and you're not selling a product, so it, it's probably easier. Yeah, we are not selling anything. Yes. Yeah, that's right. So, um, uh, but of course, I mean, as you, the question or you're asking about if it's a cultural and of course, if you're producing th something, it's different to release code than it would be for something else. Maybe I mean, open source is still seen as mostly a technical thing and that's the ecosystem from that. And then if you go into other topics like content production, content, then we have another like some history around that and other ecosystems that are more that are more uh, uh, what do you say built on other cultural differences so that's right cool i want think to... we need to wrap that up or do you have any thing you want to add yeah we're ever so slowly running out of time yeah but i think we will capture some links from you guys and put in the in the show notes uh, and we're, we're looking forward to, to your talk next spring that you just agreed to then. <laughs> and, and, your, and your demo. 
<laughs> no. We, we, so the, the deal to yeah. come here is that you stream to SVT Play the conference. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I didn't, didn't, didn't find that, but. <laughs> I mean, to be yeah, honest, we were that close 2020. Uh, if it hadn't been for Corona, that we would actually have been a part of some uh, mm. um, Aha! The trick is oh, that wow. you own your material, so we still would have had to have a camera in parallel to do the recordings as well. Um, oh. But we, we should definitely push to make that happen in, uh, in mm. 2022. It was meant as a joke from my side, but... Yeah, yes. um, <laughs> no, no, I, <laughs> I followed up. Yeah. But okay, it was so, great having you here in the in the radio channel, <laughs> and let, let's yeah. see how we can get that onto the <laughs> yeah. play app for the future. Um, thanks for uh, for uh, having us. Yes, thanks Let very much help. for inviting us. Yeah, thanks for joining. Like it was yeah. fun, and we're looking forward to more releases. Now you've left us with yeah. cliffhangers. Yes, a lot of them. But uh, please check out the, the job board. At SVT, we are always uh, looking for new developers and uh, other positions too. So, of course, yeah, drop me the link and we'll put it in the show notes. And yeah, have all the listeners go to the job board, like, and subscribe. That's yeah. how we've done the whole <laughs> thing. Yeah. yeah, but thank yeah. you for this time. Yeah, thank exactly. you. Thank you. Uh, have a great Bye. summer. Bye. <laughs>